the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Excelsis Deo. Et in terra pax hominibus, unem voluntatis, latamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te, gratias agimus te, 
let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of the bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the Apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to the breaking of the bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their numbers those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, that to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept heaven in you, heaven, who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this you rejoice, although now for a little while you may have to suffer through the various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than the perishable even through fire tested in fire, may prove to be praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet believe in him. You rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered him and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? 
Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that were not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. Happy Divine Mercy Sunday, and I hope you are all doing well and are taking time to, to celebrate this extraordinary Easter season in a different way, but to celebrate it nonetheless, because it is necessary to celebrate as an Easter people. I recently saw something online that I, that I said that I liked and I enjoyed what, what the message conveyed, but it said, while churches may be closed, now one is open in every home. And so I encourage you to foster this idea. And it's actually not a new idea. The church has always referred to the home as the domestic church. But now we really have an opportunity to recover that sense of the sacred, even within our own families. In any event, today is Divine Mercy Sunday. And one way you can celebrate today is to pray the Chaplet of Divine Mercy together as a family. Actually, at 3 p.m., we will be live streaming at Eucharistic Adoration and the prayer of the Chaplet of Divine Mercy, concluding with the prayers um, for those who have been doing the novena these past days. So please join us um, for that online. This image of Divine Mercy that was given to St. Faustina, a Polish nun on the eve of one of the darkest periods of the 20th century, the Second World War is, is actually rather simple, but yet it really contains an ocean of meaning. Immediately when I see this image, what comes to my mind is how God's mercy has been persistent, is persistent, and will be persistent, and how it's been cons consistent throughout the ages, past, present, and future. In the past, God's chosen people who he first communicated himself to in order to begin a relationship with humanity found themselves enslaved in Egypt. And in his mercy, he freed them from this slavery and the plague of death by the blood of a lamb that was sacrificed. This sacrificing of that lamb that spared them from the plague of death and liberated them from slavery in Egypt, then became the yearly commemoration and recalling of this event celebrated as Passover. And part of the Passover feast was the sacrificing of, of the lambs on the altar in the temple to remind the Jews that it is by this blood that God provided in this lamb that they were spared of the plague of death that infested Egypt and essentially passed over their homes for their liberation. While this celebration of Passover for the Jews is, this celebration is the celebration of the year. And so if you can imagine the scene in the temple of hundreds of, and hundreds of pious Jews coming at all hours of the day, flowing into the temple to bring their lambs to be sacrificed on the altar. You can also imagine, literally, how much blood is being dealt with from all these sacrifices of all these lambs. But the altar was made for this. It was specifically designed to handle that much amount of blood. It was designed in such a way that it had grooves on top of the altar and alongside the altar. And these grooves would lead into a single drain 
that would lead out of one side of the temple for the blood of the altar to flow out of. And since the thickness of the blood made it difficult for this drain to flow properly, the priest would pour a lot of water into the drain to keep the blood flowing steadily. And so essentially, imagine that you, what you, the image that you would see when you go up, in, up to the temple, from the outside you would see the temple, and to its left you would see a drain of blood and water f- constantly flowing out during the Passover celebrations of the blood of the Lamb and the water from the priest flowing out from the side of the temple. And this is exactly what the Gospel of John tells us happened with Christ on the cross. That when he was pierced with the lance from his side, blood and water flowed out. So as to tell us and to communicate to the Israelites that he is not only the Lamb of God that is sacrificed for us and for our salvation, but indeed he is rather also the new temple where you can find the mercy that you need and ultimately long for. And in our times, that mercy continues to show itself and pour itself out to us by the very work of the providence of God. That right before the atrocities of World War II broke out, Jesus appeared miraculously to St. Faustina, a Polish nun, to give her his message of divine mercy through this image. And this message to this Polish nun says to us that like this image, within darkness, in society, and in our own lives, two rays of light continue to shine. And that is the Lord's mercy to us as a humanity, as a church, and as individuals. The work of the Lord's providence in our own times flourished ultimately with the election of Pope John Paul II, a Polish pope, who was a profound devotee of the message of divine mercy. So much so that it was by his order that from now on, in the universal church, the second Sunday of Easter would be celebrated as Divine Mercy Sunday. So that as an entire church in unity, we can celebrate this message of divine mercy that the Lord communicates to us in our own times. Father Mike Gailey has an excellent, excellent presentation on YouTube on how this message of mercy is communicated to us in an, such an intricate work of providence and apparent coincidences throughout history. A detailed chain of events that led up to essentially Pope John Paul II's action to institute this great feast day that we celebrate today. I highly recommend that you, you with your families watch this presentation sometime today to celebrate this day. And the talk is called The Second Greatest Story Ever Told. And again, you can find that on YouTube. Again, the t- it's titled The Second Greatest Story Ever Told by Father Mike Gately. But why should we seek the Lord's mercy? Why should we accept his invitation to his divine mercy? What in fact is his mercy? Mercy is God's capacity to bring out good out of evil, to transform evil and darkness into goodness. It is his mercy that transformed the cross from a symbol of terror into one of hope. It is mercy that transformed his wounds into a source of healing for us. When we receive the Lord's mercy in confession, we are receiving a grace of being restored, of being renewed, and of being transformed. We are actually being changed in that moment by the work of his mercy that is being poured out into us. God's mercy doesn't just say, it's all good, you're forgiven, you can go along with your your day. Rather, it is radical and deep, just as his wounds. It goes deep within us and transforms us 
and makes us new. Confession is a physical and personal encounter with mercy incarnated himself, with Jesus Christ. While we have been sitting at home probably feeling bored and even heavy, having to sit with the reality of who we are, no longer distracted by the busyness of our lives, we may, be, we may perhaps be blessed by actually being able to see who we really are and how much indeed we are in need of renewal and ultimately of the Lord's mercy. And the Lord on his part longs to give us his mercy. He wants you to trust him. He wants you to confess your sins with complete sincerity, complete honesty and authenticity, so that those dark places that you keep hidden in your hearts, that you would rather hide from everyone else, including from your very self, that in those very places, these two rays of healing light may burst in and bring his profound healing, grace, and mercy. That, my brothers and sisters, is the only way we can change. This is the only way we can be transformed. We cannot do it on our own. And experience has proven that over and over and over again. We have a Savior who comes to us and says, Peace be with you. He wants us to experience his profound peace. He wants us to experience his profound healing. His mercy has overflowed, is overflowing, and will continue to overflow for us. There is no other way to find peace than to encounter the mercy of Jesus Christ, than to encounter the living water that he gives to us in the sacrament of confession. Let us allow ourselves to encounter that mercy. Let us have that confidence and echo the words of St. Faustina and say, Jesus, I trust in you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The risen Christ brought his peace to the apostles as he showed them his pierced hands and side. Let us pray confidently in his name, knowing that he brings true peace through his victory over death. That the whole community of the church may remain faithful to the teachings of the apostles, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that the peace of our risen Lord may spread throughout the world today. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that the divine mercy may bring peace to our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that we may share our goods and possessions through generosity and Christian hospitality. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for a quickened end to the coronavirus pandemic and for the happy repose of the souls of all who have lost their lives because of this disease. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of infinite mercy, we do not see your Son, but we love him and offer our prayers in his name. We rejoice because we believe in him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept, accept this sacrifice, sacrifice at your hands. hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may obtain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world by dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land and every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise or the offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, in paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred day of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, 
Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace of your whole family, which we make to you also for those to whom you have been pleased to give the new birth of water and the Holy Spirit, granting them the forgiveness of all their sins. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei As we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as ones who are pleased to accept the gifts of your servants, Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with a sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, and graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other this sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
At this time, I invite you to make an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present at the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life and the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast 
Come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, Immaculate Heart of Mary, Saint Joseph, Saint Faustino, Pope Saint John Paul II, Saint Maximilian Kolbe, Saint Mark, all you holy angels and saints of God. Thank you.